Um, Jumbo, Abari Yako, right, and Asante Sani. Dumelang Boma, Ebora, in Swarela, Hakaiti Hobua Setswana Sintli, Hopetoka, Kagori Nake Bua Sehoa. Um, I'm, I'm in a way a, a praise singer here this, this afternoon, but before I start that, I'd like to thank Sisa and particularly Godfrey Ramalisa for the, in, encouraging me to, to be here today and to write paper and to present. Secondly, I'd like to thank Mrs. Mal Malini Padiachi, who you heard speak very eloquently not so long ago, for inviting me to help in her company with relation to employment creation and development. I deeply appreciate that what she, what she has uh, given me the opportunity. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus and an honorary professor at WITS, but it's great to be involved in a live, active, young training company. Uh, sorry, company that trains uh, young people as well. So thank you. The other thing is that the most important word in that title is the word modern. Um, modern labor intensive construction. Uh, we, we're not talking about the pyramids here. And, and after all, we know that Egypt is not part of Africa. We learned that earlier a, a, few, a few hours ago. So we're talking about something else. And there is a, a great, um, I don't have the clicker. Can I have the clicker? There is a, a, a great success story. I'm in a sense a praise singer for what's been done outside in sub-Saharan Africa, particularly in Kenya, thank you, Botswana, Lesotho, and other countries, but particularly Kenya and Botswana and Lesotho. And I think that it took place some time ago, and so there's not that much institutional memory left. So there's a sense to what not only what lesson can South Africa learn from Africa, but what lesson can Africa learn from itself? The, the origin of this in a full presentation, um, and you can gather I could give a full presentation, um, <laughs> but that this is not the place, would go back um, to, to the Second World War. It would involve the Marshall Plan. It would involve plop, trying to transfer technology and the, the limitations of transferring technology. In the late 60s, they decided, they, the ILO and the World Bank, decided to see if there were alternative ways to generate employment within the existing economy. And they did this, a thorough invest investigation, and this is where we will scroll forward to, scroll forward, scroll forward, scroll forward. There, go back one. It was a crucial study. It took from 1971 to 1986. It was full of re reputable civil engineers. And this study was looking, is it possible to consider substituting men for machines? You'll see one of the titles, go back one, uh, is men, there we are, men or machines. And this study discovered that there's technical feasibility that labor intensive, modern labor intensive methods are applicable to a wide range, well, they can be, let's presume, are technically feasible for a wide range of constructing activities and can generally achieve the same quality. This is very important. Is it technically feasible? Yes. The next part is economic efficiency. And the bank found, and this is after a 16-year study, that whenever the wage rate was below, at that time, $4 a day, then labor-intensive methods should be seriously considered. By labor-intensive there, we're looking, I repeat, it's not the pyramids, it's how much work can be reasonably expected of a reasonable person in eight hours working of a day. But not, and this is what was done, and in 
the, it was then developed that you would um, set the task for eight hours, and at the end of, if they were finished, they could go home. And it was found that after six hours, people went home. How much time have I got? I might have got much more time. I want to channel it. Okay. The, the critical thing, and this is what happened in Kenya, Kenya established, not only did it establish a program of projects to upgrade, to construct in the first place, and upgrade its D roads. Very, in fact, it wasn't even the D roads, it was below the D roads. And over a period of 10 years, they constructed 10,000 kilometers of road. But at the same time, they established a training college up at Kisi, where they thoroughly trained what I call the missing middle. Everybody knows about us and how, how we need engineers. And uh, everyone knows that there are poor people down there who, who need work. How do you translate that into reality? And Kenya set up this, this training program, and the training program produced the missing middle. What I call the hands-on site supervisor, with the person that could generate employment, who could control and organize the work of between 10 and 50 people. It varies. The Roman, Roman one, 1 to 10 is pretty good. You can go to 50 if it's relatively simple work. The, the hands-on site supervisor is, in fact, the artisan of this kind of work. Generates, knows what needs to be done, can organize and control the work. And as I say, Kenya really is the, the model. That is five minutes, that's not bad. Um, the, I was involved uh, with, with the later stages of that program and then brought in to, trans, to translate it from construction to a maintenance operation. Because if you've established something in construction, you've then got even more opportunities for maintenance. So I want to scroll right to the end. And this will show you the resulting product of what was achieved in Kenya, the maintenance, and now you can get to the Hilton Hotel. <laughs> this is the model for development. Development is not short-term relief. Development is not that something that ha ha happens over, over a few minutes of time. I think there's a pointer here. Yes. Please note, in this stage, we're starting in here, we increase and we're over there. We're training people. At, in this period, Overheads were 84% training, setting things up, 84% to 16. Over the whole program, by the time we'd constructed uh, over 8,000, but it went on to be more than that, that m m number, the, the overheads became 16 to an, to an, out, an outlay of 84%. But please note, this is over a 13-year period. It doesn't just happen. You have to set up a program where you have organized, sorry, organized, you've decided what you're going to do. It's a mega project. In any of the major projects, let's take Madupi, let's take uh, Khartrain, let's take any of the major projects that South Africa has embarked on. Did they really expect that you start work tomorrow and then suddenly you've got a tunnel which you dig? I think there was a lead in time, am I right? Who worked on car trains here? What was the leading time? Three years at least, four years? You didn't expect to start a project and start work immediately. You had to do preparatory work. Well, Kenya and later Botswana and Lesotho, they have done that. Go on, let's move on. But uh, I've, I've got to have that slide in. That's my son in, in, in stuck in a, 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 a trench. The important point of this one is that here, this is the training being set out. Note the Ray-Bans, that's fine. There's, and if you're concerned that it's the man who's doing the measuring, 
please note it's the woman who's got the, who's got the, the club. So I think he's got to obey the instructions. Botswana had a slightly higher standard of construction. And Lesotho is pretty mountainous and so. So I'm gonna, I think I've got time to, you have to re-engineer the product, project, oops, naughty, naughty, naughty. You have to re-engineer the, come on, man. What is a program? It's a series of similar, I've said that. Um, okay, you can read. You have to re-engineer the project. You have to set up the program. You have to train the hands-on site supervisors. Next, start small, expand gradually. This has nothing to do with the emergency relief. If you hear words like fast tracking, emergency relief, run a mile, nothing ever comes. Yes, I'm sorry, yes, it does help the poor people. And it's very good for, for, for feeling good about helping the group. And sorry, the poor people need to be helped. But it leads, it's not development. Now, I think we go back because I think that's sufficient. The need for programs for success in projects, and that's how you get development. Thank you.